afternoon, everyone. And welcome to our Christmas Eve service for All Saints Anglican Parish. We begin our service with the carol In the Bleak Midwinter, sung by Wayne Thornhill. Georgia 
Barclay. And in memory of Aisha Kett from Marine and Stan Francis. In memory of Effie King Animal from Essie Roberts. In memory of my parents, Anne and George Smith from Kathy White. And in memory of Wilfred Mildred and Matthew Ashby from John and Lorraine Ashby. In memory of Loved Ones Lost from Judy Stenshaw. And in memory of my wife Angie from Bill Countryman and family. And if I may, the St. Paul's flowers. In memory of Evelyn Hunter and Reverend Les Thorne from Alan Cathcart. Trevor Wells from Gail Wells. Wilbert, Edwina, and Lee Deshawn. Linda and Dawn. Gladys and Raymond from Lester and Benny. Alvin and Bertha Strayer. Garfield Forrester. The Greaves family from Ron and Donna Greaves. Paul Murphy from Arlene Murphy. Suzanne, Pat and Stuart Murray, George and Therese Hepworth, Lorraine Sauvain from Philip Murray. And finally, the beautiful flowers given at St. James Church in memory of Jim Geary from Joan and family. The Harding family and Morley Winters from Milton. In memory of Maudie and Richard Jackson, Harry and Thelma Kyle, Grace and Elmer Campbell, from Carol and Mel, Marilyn and Brad, John Keyes and Florence Keyes Raymond, and husband Ernest Farlinger from Mar and Farlinger. In memory of loved ones of the Manhart and Garrett families, from Jim and Rosalie and Mary Manhart, Edmund Moore, the Moore and Gallagher families from from Lil Smith and family, Kyle Stevenson, Alex and Marguerite Jackson from Carol Stevenson, and Albert Thornhill from Edith Thornhill and family. We do thank everyone for their beautiful Christmas memorials this year. Our opening scripture sentence for Christmas Eve Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. God will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. Our opening hymn this evening, our first carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
we begin together in prayer this Christmas Eve, we are reminded of Psalm 130, which says that the Lord, with the Lord there is forgiveness, that he may be feared. With the Lord there is steadfast love. At this time, we will open in prayer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O glass of light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Amen. And we will now have our first lesson read by Father David. Our first le lesson is taken from the third chapter of the Epistle to Titus, beginning at the fourth verse. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him throughout all generations. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, and helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our fathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father. 
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our second reading comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in the manger. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I will now share in the carol, Silent Night. I invite you to sing along with Katie and Carolyn, wherever you are at this time.
wherever you are on this holy, beautiful evening, I would invite you to bow your head with me as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this wonderful celebration of your Son's birth. We thank you for the hope he brings and for the peace and comfort unlike anything this world can offer. And now I ask, Heavenly Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditations within all our hearts may now and always be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Silent Night. The events of Christmas took place in the blessed quiet of nighttime. The shepherds camped out under the nighttime sky. For us, I think, looking up at the stars makes it easier to believe in angels when we see the vast universe, the cosmos, and all that God has created. And in the quiet night, the gift of the Christ child was given. Christmas is a time of gift giving, and any child, if you ask them what's Christmas about, of course they will think presents. When we give a gift, we choose something that we think the person will like, but there is more than that to it. A gift comes with care, doesn't it, and love. That is so much a part of its meaning. We watched a comedy recently that centers around a, a comically self-centered woman, and a man who had wronged her many years before that tried to make up for his wrong. He bought her a very expensive necklace, and the woman said, don't think that this makes up for what you did to me. I'll accept it, because it's really nice, she said, but I don't forgive you. Well, gifts are meant to strengthen the bond between the giver and the receiver, and that's the Heart that that woman didn't accept. In a way, all gifts are something like an engagement ring. No suitor ever handed his beloved an engagement ring and said, well, this is just because I, I like the ring or I just want you to have something very pretty. That's all it means. No, the ring represents a bond that he wants to happen. And he's not happy unless she accepts that. Well, in the quiet of the first Christmas Eve, the gift of the Christ child was given. The gift was given out of love, selflessly for us. And doesn't the gift of the Christ child also come with care and love and the desire to form a bond with you and with me? Scripture tells us that in one of its best known verses, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him, all that believe should not perish but have eternal life. Love always calls for love in return. And the response that God's Christmas gift calls for is love. Your love for God lived out in a daily close walk with him. We started our service with the carol in the bleak midwinter, which says it so beautifully. And after realizing the greatness of the gift that was given, the poet asks what she can do in return. What can I give him, she writes, poor as I am. If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him, give my heart. The gift that God gave in the quiet of that first Christmas Eve calls for us to love Him. Well, let's try to say a little bit more about that on this very special occasion. When we try to explain the meaning of the birth of Jesus, we say things such as, God has come down to us in the form of an ordinary babe. It's an extraordinary thing to say that this baby was somehow in a complete and perfect union with God. And maybe it helps us to understand that if we ask ourselves, is there really any such thing as an ordinary baby? Are all babies extraordinary? When was the last time you held a precious baby? 
All babies have a kind of mystery and promise to them. We have a friend who's a priest, and when his first child was born, he said this, the baby has done nothing to make you love it. But as he held that baby, he said, I do love this baby. It is like sharing in the love that God had for the world when he first created it. With newborn babies, there is a kind of a promise and a hope that they will grow up in union with our God, never separated from all the wonders of knowing God. And yet, our faith tells us, and our experience tells us, a sad truth, that no baby will grow up with God in that way without help from God. Well, the world and the failings of our own hearts have separated every one of us from the union with God that is there in that promise. But for those of us of Christian faith, that is not a sad truth. Because Christian faith tells us that what no baby can do on his own or her own, God has provided. Provided us in the gift of his son given at Christmas time. The angel said to the shepherds, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The baby, born in the quiet of the first Christmas Eve, was born to be our Savior. For every baby born into this world, he is our Savior. Christ was born a Savior from all that spoils the promise that is there in every baby. And again, nothing says this better than our carols. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. That's why we baptize babies. So that right from the beginning of their lives, they will receive the gift of God's blessings from heaven. And maybe that helps us to understand how God came down among us in an ordinary babe. There are actually no ordinary babies, and there are no ordinary people. There are babies and people that God intends to live in union with Him forever. There are babies and people for whom God gave the gift of the Christ child to restore us to that original promise. And how do we receive that gift? In faith and through love. Love always calls for love in return. To receive a gift is to receive the love that goes with it. Then at this Christmas time, let's renew our love for God who loves us and gave us this most wonderful gift. I speak to you this night in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue in worship and in celebration of God's wondrous gift with hearing the song of Simeon. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to light the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now ever shall be, world without end. Glory. 
Now we'll say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, Thank you. 
the power of the Holy Spirit and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.